welcome, welcome to, to Virtual TrekCon 3. Hi, I'm Thomas Suprana, Emmy Award winning makeup artist. Uh, I Some of my credits include uh, Star Trek Next Generation, Star Trek Deep Space Nine, Star Trek Voyager, Enterprise, uh, let's see, Generations, and First Contact. Hi, I'm uh, Curtis Fortier. I'm an award nominated actor <laughs> and uh maybe you've seen me in uh things like um uh, the ronald moore uh tv show for all mankind uh you can check me out on amazon prime there's two movies uh one called secret santa one called tethered uh or my own web series uh 12 sided die that i wrote and starred in and you can also check me out uh at in the amazing sci-fi horror film fifth passenger directed by uh scott baker so uh that yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what, what, what are we doing today? Uh, we're going to be doing a TNG Romulan. So I've got a, a glasses off. Oh, please. oh, they didn't. That's right. These Romulans had retinox, so uh, <laughs> they didn't. Uh... So um, this is the forehead, and then of course it's going to get a couple ears, and um, so I'm going to prep um, everything. Uh, the glue that I use um, is Telus's number eight F from Premier Products. Check them out online. Um, uh, amazing silicone prosthetic adhesive. It's breathable. It uh, stays on until you take it off, which is, you know, a good thing. And um, it's easy uh, removal. So we, what was it like if, if you were doing this like like in the 70s? I mean, would would I mean all the I'm ooh. sure the technology has come <laughs> leaps ooh. and bounds since since then. But was it was it just like basically a piece of plastic on your face? And well, with, uh, with crazy glue. No, foam. Right. Oh, no, 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 don't ever say that. Oh, okay. <laughs> sorry. Yeah. No, no, because some some kids have actually used that. And oh, okay. uh, oh yeah, no, yeah. no, it's it, yeah, you yeah. should not put yeah. crazy glue on <laughs> any part of your body. And. Um, uh, so, in in the seventies in the makeup mm -hmm. world, um, we uh, we had spirit gum that was kind of the weapon of choice as far as adhesives go, mm -hmm. and um, it's it, it was it was okay. It did the job. I mean, we pretty much just used spirit gum for uh, lace pieces, like the eyebrows we're going to glue on sure. top of this. So um, basically, uh, this this adhesive. Um, it's flexible. It's a silicone medical adhesive. On Star Trek, we actually use something called 355 medical adhesive, okay. and it was thinned with trichlorotrifluoroethane, which is a fluorocarbon and has been banned for oh. use. Oh. Um, not saying that big companies st still don't use it, mm. but you know that's mm -hmm. big companies paying tariffs, and we have to pay for that ah. as well. Anyway, so. Um, this is a really close facsimile to that original medical adhesive, okay. silicone medical adhesive. Dow actually made that. Huh. So I just put thinned Telesis number 8F all over. I put it through the eyebrows, as you can see. And um, I'm just going to take a little bit here. It's a contact style adhesive. And uh, if we were doing this on the show, you probably would have had a 3.47 a.m. call, or I would have had a 3.47, and you would have been there a half hour later or whatever. Right. Um, I think we were allotted, oh gosh, for Romulans, I think it was, I think it was like a two hour makeup, and then an hour, you know, to get wigged and and wardrobe um, mm -hmm. was another, I don't know, uh, another 45 minutes or some nonsense like that. I'm going to use some uh, RCMA no color powder and kind of brush that on the prosthetic piece uh, that I already have glue on and uh, it's just taking the tack away. It doesn't make sense, but it does. Okay, and I'm just going to re-wet this area sure. here and try to get this centered. Okay. 
You can talk while I do this. Okay. How how much time did you had did did they allow you to take it all off at the end of the day? However long it took, okay, basically. Gotcha. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> a funny story. Yeah. <laughs> I was supposed to get an early out because I had company from out of town visiting, sure. um, and I was you know living in L.A. at the time and stuff like that. So um, it was me and this other guy. Uh, doing the very first Vidians okay. from Voyager. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and uh, they were pre-painted, mm -hmm. which saved a lot of time. You know, they were basically full head masks that glued down, you know, and, and well, it's Friday, and uh, this guy ended up taking off and leaving me in charge of not just my makeup, but his as well. And it was like, um, I was supposed to be the one to <laughs> go home early. Oh, well. Mm. So I took my guy out, you know, not a problem taking his makeup off, you know. The other guy um, had something we called, well, back then we called it Bondo Stipple. It was made from Prosade Medical Adhesive, which is a acrylic kind of medical adhesive and fumed silica mm -hmm. like that was mixed to make a paste. I use something called Beta Bond, which I prefer because it has less water content. It, it's all makeup jargon, but anyway, it's this thick, thickened acrylic adhesive. Um, <laughs> and he had it mushed in his eyebrows. Ugh. And so, you know, the guy wanted to keep his eyebrows, so it, <laughs> it took me a very long time to work it out of his eyebrows, and uh, wow. it was it was kind of a nightmare for all of us involved. And you know, like our second AD was up saying, "What? You know, why hasn't you know uh, your actor clocked out?" I'm like, "Here, I'll show you why." <laughs> and then her boss our first ad came up and was flipping out it's like you guys are still on the clock this is costing money and i'm like this is why and she was like oh my god i'm so sorry and i'm like yeah tell me about it i'm <laughs> kind of sorry too i anyway so but yeah um yeah we hadn't take these people out and the thing is on some on some cases, like on on first contact, mm -hmm. you had a makeup artist who came in early, got the the Borgs in their makeup, and um, we watched them all day long and did their touch ups and stuff. But so we wouldn't get. Massive overtime, mm -hmm. <laughs> and and we could make our turnaround. They would send us home and hire people to come in and maintain our makeups that we did that morning, and take them out of makeup that evening. Hmm. Whenever they were done shooting. you've done Tom that we would know of? Oh gosh, Romulans and Falcons. Um, well, on Star Trek Generations, uh, did the dead Romulan in that really brief, eyes closed please, that brief oh, scene sure. where Michael Dorn as Worf rolls him into camera and goes, Romulans. And um, we're gonna have a little surprise. You're getting two makeups for the price of one. Oh, I'm very excited. Yes, so I'm gonna do a regular Romulan makeup that we would have done um, on TNG or DS9. All right. And um, let's see, and then um, I'm going to recreate the best I can with what I have, the dead Romulan. <laughs> now, here's a little interesting fact. Um, 
I, I, might, I might as well tell the story now. Sure. All right. Um, so we're... Generations. I know on the other uh, virtual track cons, I, I mentioned about how I was called in for Deep Space Nine. And it was like the season finale. And we were finishing up. It was the series finale for um, Next Gen. And we were doing some Generations shooting. And it was mostly the stuff with like Whoopi's... Um, people being pulled out of the nexus or whatever mm -hmm. and and all that stuff anyway the enterprise b the ill-fated uh, launch of the enterprise b anyway um so i was like i was called on on one show but it's like ah oh, we need you over here ah oh, we need you over there and it was like uh, juggle <laughs> it was like it was really odd but it was fun because it, it kept you busy you weren't just sitting there you know it was it was wonderful you know I was young and I was on my toes and mm -hmm. it was great and you know had the dream job working on Star Trek um, being a Star Trek fan Unlike some people who work on the shows, anyway, so <laughs> <laughs> they just weren't fan, or they they had never seen it. They didn't they, care. They, they weren't into sci-fi. Oh, gotcha. They weren't, you know, they, they they didn't. Yeah, and and so it was just a makeup job. But, oh, uh, I see. I see what you're saying. Yeah. So um, Mike's like talking to me about some of the stuff that you know was coming up. Like there was this one character I did on. DS9. She was a background character, mm -hmm. um, and she was a bullion. The blue bisection. You can open now. Okay. The blue bisection of people. Yeah. And, and so what happened? Like is, Mr. Mott. Yes. Um, and and you know she was going to be on um, the Enterprise uh, and turned forward mm -hmm. uh, for um, a scene, and um, and then uh, uh, Mike and I were talking. And he's like. We've got a dead Romulan, and I don't know if that was like thrown in last minute. Mm -hmm. He's like, you know, we want him damaged and stuff, and and I'm like, well, you know, how about how about like you know a a, a phase a phaser type weapon um, on kill, um, you mm -hmm. know, like doing some damage and stuff, but not disintegrate and everything. Of course, you know, because they want a body, right? And um, I. I and, and and Mike was saying about like the eye and and, uh -huh. and like the side of his face and I'm like I happen to have <laughs> a piece that I did for this little C. Thomas Howell movie for an actor named Rudy Ramos and it was a shotgun a movie shotgun blast a real shotgun blast would tear your head off that close um, seen as Rudy Ramos looks into a peephole and a door and the barrel comes up on the other side of the door and blows them away. Anyway, so this is the piece still with flashing. This is actually from the mold. And so I got to sell a few of these to Mike. And I also had the side of the face, which I don't know where that mold is, but I have an idea for Star Trek fans out there. Please contact me. Uh, you'll have my contact information um, provided. But I was thinking about doing a display piece with one of these. The mold is on its way out, and I want to retire it. So there's the eyepiece. I was thinking about mounting this on a nice board, framing it with a picture of the dead Romulan and uh, my autograph. So basically, this just fit over okay. like that. And... Uh, so we'll do that after we do sure, normal, sure. alive All right. Romulan. We'll do All right. really messed up dead Romulan. Gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> so this and, is... And th now, the just so everybody uh, out in uh, uh, Trekland uh, can know, and th th right now it feels like th that... It definitely feels secure, but my skin feels taut. Is that is that supposed to be I a... I get a little tug on here. Okay, okay. Because these eyebrow pieces, you know, they hook down here. Like, mm -hmm. you know, right... Right into the socket. Right. And as the day would go on, it just would... Okay. And so you felt tired. So I would always put a little bit of a tug because your skin will naturally sure, just kind of... Sure, sure. Gotcha. Yeah. So... And this, these prosthetics and everything, this is designed to wear 14, 15, 16 hours a day. Mm-hmm. This is foam latex like we use on the show. Mm -hmm. I know everyone loves their silicone and everything's silicone now. 
One of the things that I really love about foam is it's breathable. Okay. It's lightweight, where silicone isn't breathable, and you know it. What's the advantage of silicone? It's translucent. Oh, okay. You know, and you know it's great for ears. You know, mm -hmm. um, noses. You know, but like, you know. Uh, the big argument mm -hmm. is it's time, you know, um, uh, people say that there's less, sorry, I've got to reach back. Oh, yeah, you. This is Beta Bond from Premier Products. I'm going to need a, another shot of that. Sure. There we go. So what happens is, um, yeah, silicone. Um, the big argument is you don't have to paint as, as much with it. You can just flick some color on it with an airbrush and away you go because you can intrinsically color it and blah blah blah, you know. And yeah, I it's not like I don't like silicone. I think it has its purpose, but for some stuff, you know, mm -hmm. um especially like big head stuff, you know, like some of those big heavy prosthetics, you know, uh, or like the mask, like Jim Adars. It's like mm -hmm. I couldn't imagine somebody running around in California heat, wearing a silicone Jimadar. That, I mean, the wardrobe alone was pretty killer. Right, right, right. So I just got off of the Star Trek cruise, and yeah, you know, I was talking with some of our actors about, mm -hmm. you know, like some of the locations. And like when we would start the season, it would be like August. Right. And anyone who's been to L.A. in August <laughs> knows how miserable that can be. Yeah. And, um, you know, Cardassians, their neoprene suits, you, not breathable. Um, Fringy, even. I mean, it was upholstery fabric. You know, it's just not breathable, uncomfortable. And, and you're on location. Yeah. And and even even, you know, when you were... On the back lot, you know, you, you'd, as soon as you left an air-conditioned soundstage, you were in the sweltering heat, and then there was all the, you know, the paved black tar paved, oh, yeah. you know, streets. It, it, it just, you know, it was. So, can you sweat in this? Can I mean, did that mess up? Like, if if somebody came back from walking outside and they were just drenched in sweat, does that? affect the, the the foam or the silicone well silicone um once again it's not breathable and so it, you'll start getting like little ruptures oh, where it's okay. glued down where it's loosened itself and you'll start getting little sweat beads and stuff foam you will yeah, and this particular adhesive mm -hmm. you can actually you can actually breathe it you know your skin can breathe and um you know, I've been on shows where the actor is in like mm -hmm. a Jim Adar thing, and and you you'd squeeze the prosthetic, and sweat would come out, and you're like, Ooh. <laughs> oh, that oh, was nasty. Wow. <laughs> wow. So now, everyone glues ears differently, and I remember the first time I glued the ear. I this is just a little hint to any hobbyists out there who are doing some cosplay. Um, I would put glue in the ear, you know, uh, and, and then glue on the ear. And then right when I would get to this point, it would stick and it would just be a... Ears don't really sweat like the rest of you. Um, note, get some alcohol, you know, on a cotton bud and clean out the uh, ear because they're a little waxy sometimes or, you know, there's just a little bit of slipperiness going on. So what I would do is I would actually put the ear on and take a bent adhesive brush and um, put the glue on underneath, kind of snake the brush underneath. I'll be showing you how to do that. Um, just a little bit more thinner. Okay, so this is thinned medical adhesive again. Let's see, tilt mm -hmm. this way. So there's no glue. So what I'm going to do is hold this up and then snake the brush underneath here, as you can see. And I'm trying not to get the actual edge 
of the prosthetic. I'll leave that to the last. And then I'll anchor it down. way a bit. There we go. Sure. How do you tell a Vulcan ear from a Romulan ear? Oh, now on uh, next gen, some of the ears that we had were really thick. They weren't really thin and it's odd. I, I mean, and I think, I don't know if it was done deliberately or just trying to get away from what they looked like, but then when Leonard Nimoy came back, you know, he was very specific. He's like, no, the ears go really forward. They're, you know, and, and so a lot of those early ears in the early years, <laughs> thank you. Um, uh, they, they, they were thick, you know, they, they were kind of textury and, and, um, Anyway, by the time we started doing stuff um, on on Voyager and Enterprise, the Vulcan ears and the Romulan ears were really nice and you know sleek the way they used to look, you mm -hmm. know. And and uh, so yeah, I um, I you know I always kind of equate Romulans having bulkier ears than, than uh, uh, Vulcans. But I, I don't know if that's actually factual. I, I think that's just a product of the environment of, of, you know, what was available on the show in the ear box <laughs> at the time. <laughs> when, when you were doing Borg, how much license did you have? Because obviously a Borg had to be some previous species. How how much of a license did you have to okay that Borg's gonna be a Klingon, this Borg's gonna be a whole species oh, we haven't seen, this Borg's gonna be a Romulan. I mean It's funny you bring this up because I'm sure I talked about this on the previous two. Oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> no, no, no. I actually did the very first Klingon Borg. Okay. And I would love to you know, if we do another one of these, maybe we can get um Wayne King Jr. To sit and let me do that to him again, <laughs> but we have to do it in August when it's like 120 degrees, you know, because uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, call him for that one. Yeah, because you know, who, who doesn't like a little makeup PTSD? <laughs> um, any, anyway, now um, on first contact, that's when we first started seeing the different races. Like, right. if you look at the first Borg, they. They were really different, you know. They had like those lycra suits or whatever, right? And yeah, bits and bobs, yeah, attached. However, haphazardly, you know. But you know, they were different, and they were pasty. They were dry, and that was the thing. I remember doing one, and Mike's like, "They gotta look dry." Mm -hmm. And then you know, here comes first contact, and they're wet and juicy and nasty looking, and you know like you just you know you're gonna catch something from mm. one of them you know um and that's when we started doing we had a bullion we had oh god um <sighs> well, i remember seeing yeah. that and thinking what a what a, what a clever touch and yeah. you know it just added a you know it, it added history to those because you're like oh that's a that's a vulcan borg how did that happen i mean yeah. it, it was it, it was great and um on a Voyager episode, we had a Romulan, um, Romulan Borg, and uh, yeah, I mean it's 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 where it's it's odd, like the whole Romulan Vulcan dynamic and everything. And being a Star Trek fan from way back in the beginning, um, it, it's interesting how things have arced and got away from Gene's vision and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but I remember uh, on Enterprise doing some uh, zombie Vulcans. And uh, once again, on this cruise that I was just on, the Star Trek cruise, um, it was so great. Like, I was doing fan makeups. And being a fan myself, we were talking. They're like, so blah, 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 you know, what was, you know, your first Vulcan or whatever. And I'm like, I think my first Vulcan may have been the zombie. <laughs> <laughs> you know, 
which that was the, the set that we had for that was kind of wicked cool you know it was it was definitely like a haunted house kind of set you know they had like the the light um this lighting effect so it was like cra it would literally make a crackling sound wow. and um and it was flashing and it was very dramatic and smoky as hell though that's you know what about uh tell me about the about the vidians because that always seemed like oh, a the really vidians. involved makeup because the hands we did hands and it, it was a pullover and then i think we had like a lip piece and it, they they were pretty they were actually they're pretty, pretty standard uh -huh, yeah okay. i mean you know compared to something that needs you know a lot of work like um you know with a romulan it's forehead it's ears you know it's wig mm -hmm. it's eyebrows cling on it's a forehead it's a nose Bullion, the okay. m one of the most difficult because if you centered anything wrong, it looked like a crooked highway. That <laughs> bisectioned alien, you know, thing going on there. The, 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 that line, mm -hmm. it was a back of it, like an occipital piece uh -huh. that went up to um, here. So that was like one piece, and then um, the forehead. And I think we ended up doing it so it was all one piece to here. Okay. It had to be perfect. And so the person sitting there really had to have their posture. And you had to check it in the mirror and wow. you know, visually. So at 3 o'clock in the morning, you know, no one is like perfect posture. It was, mm. it was you know, those. So it was this piece that went to here. Forehead, nose, underneath nose, lower lip, chin, throat and then the earlobes and eyebrow covers wow was, i mean it was a tremendous amount of work wow so, yeah i mean out of out of makeups you know that one really you know that that was a back-breaking makeup cardassians uh just did one on the last virtual track con on tracy coco and um if you guys haven't seen it it's available on youtube you can check that out. Were you ever involved in designing? And the, I mean, if they say hey, we want this to be a, well, do they kind of you know, you credit to my of? credit to my boss. Mm -hmm. You know, Mike Westmore is a, the you know the supervisor designer for the show, but he would come to us and work with us. He would be like, okay, so there's a species of aliens, blah blah blah, you know, um, warlike, yada yada. Um, they need to look mean you know okay, all right and and so we would come up with like different sculptures and do like the dog and pony show in rick uh, berman's office which was terrifying because it's rick berman and you would go in there and you know he'd be behind his desk and you'd, you'd be holding a sculpture you know and he'd be like no no <laughs> a little like that you know, and it's like, okay, so back to the drawing board, you know, and, and it, it, you know, so, you know, Mike really was, Mike Westmore was very interactive with his artists that he hired and, mm -hmm. and was lovely to work with, you know, and, and uh, it was, for me, it was, you know, a huge honor because this is, you know, the Mike Westmore, oh, excuse me, sorry, oh, sorry. sorry. Ooh, ooh, ooh. and, uh, My granddad always spoke so highly of him, but you know, my granddad worked with many of the different Westmores. Um, but those are other stories, anyway. So, um, <laughs> I, I, but like, my granddad worked with Mike on a film called Capricorn One. <gasps> <laughs> oh! <laughs> if you is... haven't seen Capricorn One, I suggest watch it because... Sam Watterson. Yeah. Uh, yeah. OJ uh, Simpson. OJ Simpson. Somewhere. I've got to uh. find him because I've been packing a bunch of stuff and I have a ton of photos with my granddad and and like you know the the you know James Brolin and and Sam Watterson, but like like OJ like because my, my grandfather was a huge sports fanatic, you know like there's pictures of like OJ hugging my grandmother and stuff wow. like that and Jim, and, we can't have a screw up and sure enough. What we had is a grade A American screw up. Turns out the people from Con American 
wanted to make a little money. Nothing wrong with that. Turns out they made a little bit too much money. We had a life support system that wouldn't work. You'd all be dead in three weeks. They'd ca Congress would cancel the program. The president would still have his desk. And we'd have That's a, amazing. We still have a program. It's amazing you remember that. I know the I th that there, there's that scene, and then the scene uh, where they reveal uh, where, where they take the three astronauts into the uh, into the in, into the set. Mm -hmm. I do those two scenes as showcase scenes. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, because they're they're huge technical scenes, and so, cause the the one's a monologue, and then the one is uh, my granddad you know, mm -hmm. uh, brought me to CBS. In the valley, if I'm not mistaken. God, it's been eight. I was a little kid. Uh huh. Um, and my granddad took me to the set, and it was the NASA control yeah, set. Yeah. Yeah. And then the set with the Martian lander and. Oh uh, yeah. So I no. actually got to go and yeah. see all that, and he's like, "Don't touch anything." <laughs> no, that's a that's a great scene. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. He 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 brings him in and and uh, God, I can't. I'm trying to think of how it. I can think of the, the monologue. Brew, how long we know each other? 15 years, Brew, 15 years. You were, uh, uh, you look like just fresh off of Wheaties box and me all bright eyed and bushy tailed. I wanted to go to the moon and uh, I, I wish I could do the monologue right now. Crap. It's, uh, I haven't done it in a couple of years. I highly suggest everyone watch it. It's great because Hal Holbrook is amazing. Hal Holbrook's so evil in it oh and i hate seeing hal holbrook play a bad guy because he's he, the perfect person to play that bad I, guy because of that please. yeah yeah because you don't expect that mm -hmm. he's like grandfatherly you know yeah but um yeah i um i love that movie and i think it it really speaks to how You know, like the trust of the government kind yeah. of thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, But yeah, if yeah. you look at, like, going back in the 70s, it, it, people started questioning things. I mean, we had Watergate. Um, Kolchak, the Night Stalker, one of my favorite things growing up mm -hmm. as a kid. I mean, that was all about, you know, you know, the power set be is pre-X-Files, you know. Yeah, and, yeah. And, uh, you know, trust no one. <laughs> and, and uh, yeah, but Capricorn 1 is such a such a great film and uh oh yeah and i really think it does hold up it does it completely does elliot gould's in it yeah i i got to work with him briefly mm. and um and i was just kind of like that's elliot gould i was so kind of starstruck and i got to work with Hal Holbrook, and um, which was exciting because I've been a fan of his, you know, f uh, from so many different things. But uh, yeah, I, I, not, I can't. I'm trying. I can't get those monologues out of my head now. Hmm. Um, That's yeah. so random that I just that, mentioned that. And, no, I've, I, I always wanted to do those monologues uh, as, as showcases because one of them's one of them's a, a huge monologue and then one of them is uh, it's it's the one where, where it's the reveal and he he, he basically says to him look we're I want you guys to be on board but whether you whether you say we're gonna do it and again I don't I don't mean to spoil it but yeah but, but spoilers but but the big <laughs> the, the big re re reveal he, he you know where, where Brew Baker goes you know we're not gonna go along with it and he's like well you have to what, what do you mean we have to well your families and then there's just this gasp in the room oh come on Brew, what do you think they're they're grown-ups dealing with this grown-ups what are you talking <laughs> what are you mm -hmm. talking about there's a device on the plane <laughs> if they don't get it all clear signal the oh it's 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 shakespearean yeah. that's how chilling it is yeah yeah it, yeah it's 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 odd that a lot of people have never seen this oh movie. okay sorry <laughs> we're, we're we're nerding out about about this movie. and it's not this even star trek movie, not even star trek <laughs> no no but um but my old boss uh he, he yeah. did that show and yeah. um, so okay now right. there's a fabulous company and every time i mention them rcma research council of makeup artists okay this is called ln1 okay that was created for thank you uh, there we go that makes sense yes. and uh so my company does a prosthetic paint version of it and uh so that's me um 
you'll you'll get all the information and stuff like that. So if you want to do a proper Romulan or Vulcan makeup, you have to have the right colors. That's one thing I noticed at like um, like these Star Trek conventions and you know sci-fi conventions and you know, the, the the boat I was just on. <laughs> Some people who are cosplaying, uh, the colors weren't right. I and and for me, I I was there and it just hurts, you know. <laughs> um, like there's a color called Andor Blue I make, and it was a color that Mike Westmore had me make for the Andorians on Enterprise, and you know, it, I saw some Andorians that were almost purple on on board, and I'm like, okay. Mm. No, maybe it's a... And Dorian with a tan? There you go. Ah, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yeah, so... But, um... It's make <laughs> Okay. Excellent. What right. was, uh... I mean, what was... Uh, what was your first uh, like professional uh, a job? First, uh, uh, prof like I mean, uh. was it was it before Star Trek or was, oh, was Star God, Trek? Yeah. Okay, no, I had a career before Star Trek. Um, and um, what was the first thing I or one of? Uh, well, it, I think it was Return of the Living Dead Two. Okay. Which you know, once again, that was kind of a big deal for me because I was like, "Oh my God, I love the the first one, mm -hmm. being a punk rocker and all into punk music and loving the soundtrack, and you know, yeah." So, uh, yeah, mm. that's cool. So I'm just I'm just getting like the base coat on right now okay. because with Romulans we we were able to add more of the green accents. Okay. Which I, I noticed like on Vulcans we didn't as much. You know I mean it was distinctive like the wigs and stuff. You know like like Spock had like the straight cut, mm -hmm. but like if you notice Romulans have always had more of a dip there even before the forehead mm -hmm. prosthetic. So. Well, they couldn't be exactly the same. There needed to be some, I guess, cultural differences, or yeah. maybe even, you know, even over the centuries or millennia since. Yeah, since I forgot they split the apart. I forgot the timeline, but it really wasn't, you know, as you know, it wasn't like, you know, a million years. It was only a, a few thousand years, I think, or something like that. Years. Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't a huge time thing. But yeah, I just started seeing like this thing on YouTube about theories and things like that. And it's it's odd, like, you know, when Nemesis came out, I was like, why are the Raymonds, Ramen, why are the Ramen, <laughs> why, why are the Ramen so different? They look like vampires. I mean, they look like something from Buffy. Mm. You know, it's, <sighs> I mean, you know, it's a big movie. They've got money, you know, but I, th I don't know. I. I always had my idea what like Romulus and Remus would look like. It wouldn't, you know, have been that drastic. But you know, that's not movie making. You know, how is uh, how has this changed with um, like the onset of all the HD and IMAX? I mean, where like every detail is just blown up. Um, I mean, did you have to be more? I mean, is it? You, yeah, that's another reason some people like silicone over mm -hmm. foam is because they say that the edges are better and stuff like that. I've been on shows where I've had, mm -hmm. you know, edges on silicone that weren't great or they happened later during the day. And I'm like, oh, great. Uh, <laughs> because it's a vinyl okay. encapsulator. And as the day goes on, depending on a person and their skin, yada, yada, you know, you temperature whatever it, it can start breaking down and then you start getting crappy edges now you're playing catch up yeah, and uh, but yeah um foam's sturdy um i i do love my phone but anyway um yeah hd <clears throat> it's interesting how like when voyager went hd mm -hmm. like how things had to change and like watching tng in hd god <laughs> TNG and HG, uh, you can see things, <laughs> but you know that's that's, you know, 
not a <laughs> not a fan of doing prosthetics in HD. No, um, but yeah, it's it's made a huge difference, like sculpting, mm -hmm. um, mold making, like all, the whole process of of fabrication has, you know, had to you know come come up with the technology and and uh, become better. Yeah, because it can't look like you're wearing foam. It can't look like you're wearing a prosthetic. Mm -hmm. Let's see. So then you, you had to paint each Romulan and each Vulcan then. Mm hmm Right? Wow. Yeah. Yeah, it wasn't like... Like, there was a character in Quark's bar called Morn. Morn, oh yeah. Yeah, he's, he, he was a pre-painted foam mask mm -hmm. that the actor would wear. And you just did makeup around the eyes and mouth. Um... The DN's pretty much the same, you know, mm -hmm. they were pre-painted, um, and, you know, oh gosh, I bring this up and, and it's funny, I, I've been told that certain people from the show now mm -hmm. uh, are saying it didn't happen, and it's like, yeah, it did. We reused things, like, the Morn Head mm -hmm. would last a season or two, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> And, you know, we would sanitize it and, you know, wring the sweat out of it and all that stuff. And, you know, just, and it was the same actor wearing it. But, you know, other things, you know, they would be pre-painted and just random background people would be in it. And, mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> it's kind of gross. <laughs> so, um, now, what I would have done mm -hmm. um, is, is probably done the entire you know, um, face in a watered down version of my prosthetic paint. Okay. Um, because it will stay on and not come off. Um, in fact, I, I am going to drag it down onto the face just a little bit. All right. Uh, when I was when I was a kid, I remember watching it on, on Channel Ten in Grand Rapids, and it, it's a channel that, that didn't come in very well, so. You had to watch it between the, the squiggly lines and stuff like oh. that. But I, I just remember, but but the colors, the the you know the red, the command yellow and the blue, they always really came through, and that it, it that caught my attention. But and then once you know once you actually watch the show, you, you, even as a kid, I'm like, well, this is this is amazing. And then and then once you started like you would go to the bookstore and you would see that there were novels and like you're like, there's other stuff, and it, it just and I was just so excited because it was, you know, it was, it was all, at the time, for me, it was all one consistent universe. So it was, you know, it, uh, so it was, you know, I had to be like seven, you know, I mean, but I, I, I caught it in reruns. I, I never, right. I wasn't around when it was, you know, it was same. I'm not that old. <laughs> <laughs> But you watch, you watch TNG and stuff like that. Yeah, that that I was I was a freshman in college that, and I, I remember driving out to my to some friend's place when Encounter at Farpoint premiered because we were so excited. We were just so I mean it was like and it was again it was because in the I went to college at Michigan Tech University and. Um, they didn't have cable in the in the dorm rooms at the time, so you, you had to go find some place off campus, and a bunch of us would drive out there every week. Wow! To to walk, you know, because because Michigan Tech's in Houghton, Michigan, which is kind of in the middle of nowhere, up up, up in the Upper Peninsula. That's my map, and um, and so we would drive like you know ten miles out of town. <laughs> to watch it and then every week and it was just and i remember it was also the like the early days of email and stuff and i remember reading they released like a synopsis of the characters and i remember reading you know picard and french and all the different characters and it was like how are they gonna ever do this and then and now it, it was it was masterful you know it was, so yeah i take it for granted now how easy it is to to catch Oh, to, yeah, on stream, yeah, just, yeah, just, yeah, but yeah, because cause it, it would air once, and then, I mean, it was even really kind of before VHSs, you know, especially, you know, and, uh, you know, so you would watch it once, and then that was it, it was in your memory, you know, you, there's no, oh, let's go back and catch that and freeze frame it, no, it was none of that, Yeah, it was none of that. 
Interesting you'd say that. Uh -huh. um, I guess for the DVD release uh -huh. and, and everything, um, next gen, some of the things change. Like mm -hmm. with the Borg, uh, when you saw the, the readout yeah. uh, of like the crew members or whatever, uh -huh. uh, they changed that. Um, and, and changed the names, but originally when it aired, it was like Troughton, Baker, um, uh, and it was like the original actors who played Hartnell, who played oh, okay. Doctor Who. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. And it was a little shout out to Doctor Who and, you know, oh, the cool. Cybermen or something. I don't know. Anyway, mm. that's, that's what I've been told. Mm. So there's and probably going to be somebody who's going to watch mm. this and go... If you're wrong, you're. Stupid. And they added a whole scene with Jabba the Hutt too, from what I remember. <laughs> right? There was a whole scene with. Uh, oh no, I'm talking about track. I know. I was, I was kidding. Yeah, oh, oh was okay. <laughs>you wish <laughs> it was the first Apollo mission hadn't reached the moon <laughs> that we hadn't gone on to Mars and then to the nearest star that's like saying that you still wish you operated with scalpels and sewed your patients up with cat gut like your great 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 grandfather used to <laughs> I'm in command I could order this but I'm not because Dr. McCoy is right in pointing out the enormous danger potential in contact with life and civilizations as fantastically advanced as this, but I also must point out that the possibilities for knowledge and advancement <laughs> are equally great. Risk. Risk is our business. A little bit of ham. That's what this starship is all about. <laughs> That's why we're aboard her. Okay, I had to act a little bit. Yes. <laughs> Just a little bit. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, it's uh, interesting about <laughs> working with Shatner uh -huh. <laughs> and actually seeing, like, the way he he actually did these <laughs> scenes. <laughs> and you were expecting, like, somebody else, like, you know, uh, yeah. somebody who imitates Shatner doing. And, and every once in a while, like, he would make a move or, like, a voice inflection, you know, and you're like, that's it. That's, that's it. what you know. Anyway, so um, <laughs> would they I, direct him? Do, no, you're, you're doing a Shatner impression. Do less. What? No, that's me. I'm. A, I, I saw his. Uh, I saw his one man show twice. Which I mean, if you want William Shatner, that's the place to go. And it was. Just, it was William Shatner for two hours. <laughs> I mean, oh God. Just being William Shatner, and yeah. I mean, if I got paid, that would be <laughs> not. Oh wait, yeah. You said you worked with them. Where did you, on Star Trek or um, Generations? Okay. And oh, yeah. on yeah. Uh, the Star Trek CD-ROM game um, that had live action. And oh, okay. It was called Starfleet Academy. Oh yeah. And I always wanted Walter to Walter Koenig was in that. Yeah, too. Walter yeah. And, yeah. and George. Yeah. yeah. And Christopher Plummer was in that. Mm -hmm. Right? Wow. Okay, so this is, once again, for you cosplay people out there, this is the Rubber Mask Grease palette from um, Kryolan. Uh, they're a, a German-American uh, company, and you can get this green. I think it's called 512, and it's kind of a, a drab green. And that, my friends is the shading color used for Romulans and or Vulcans. So we'd like to emphasize that inner part of the ear. I'm using a bit of uh, alcohol to kind of uh, uh, thin it down. And uh, so you just... Now, this is the thing. You do not want to use regular cream makeups on prosthetics, especially rubber, like foam rubber and things like that, because those oils will penetrate the prosthetic, leaving the paint looking ashy and dead. So I'm actually going to, I'm going to get painty with it. Once again, the difference between next gen DS9 pre Voyager things were a bit painty um, and uh, you know so 
some of us who came in started stippling. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go in with my LN1 where I made that very painty and I'm going to kind of haze over it a little bit and make it less painty. Yeah, what was the color of the uh, of the greenish tint? You called that the the Krylon? I think it's I think it's uh, uh, five. What was it five twelve? No, um, sorry. It's okay. It, it's a number system. Um, uh, five hundred and twelve or five twelve. Um, but I. Uh, and is it? I, I assume it's green because. The Vul because the Vulcans around her supposedly had had green blood. Yes. So that's the, yeah. Here's a here's a little treat. Oh yeah. So when Mike was discussing, I was going to kill a Romulan. Mm -hmm. um, every Klingon's fantasy. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, uh, I uh, I also got the the job of making the the blood for the dead Romulan. Oh, cool. And uh, this is what's left over. Wow! This is actually handwritten in Sharpie. This is... Romulan blood. What what year did we do Generations? 1995, 6, 5, 4, 4? I don't know. Please please uh, check that. because it, it was the 90s. Yeah. Mid-90s. Anyway, so... Yep, yeah, that's... Actual Romulan... Right. Both Romulan. Romulan. It came out in 94. So oh, okay. So, so you could have worked on it in 93 or... Okay. Something. God. Seems like yesterday. Mm. Sort of. Mm. <laughs> okay, eyes closed, please. Mm. Okay, so I'm... Once again, I'm going in with this green color. Kind of theatrically, but... Trust me on this one, sort of. I think I, I think I know what I'm doing. When when uh, a regular a cat a regular a, a series regular uh, that normally doesn't have makeup put on like for some reason that episode they're they're a Klingon or they're or they're you know being disguised as another uh, you know alien and then consequently they have to show up in the makeup chair are they are they like hey this is novel this is gonna be great I'm gonna be a or are they like oh I gotta be there for <coughs> five hours early yeah m uh, most. Most of the non-heavy makeup alien or, or uh, uh, humanoids, mm -hmm. you know, humans, whatever, yeah, it, it was dreadful. You know, they're just like, oh god, really? You know, mm -hmm. they. It wasn't like, oh, yippee, I'm, I'm yeah, I get to, yeah, I, I, I rarely ran into fans of makeup on Star Trek, um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. which is funny, and as the years have past in my career uh -huh. I'm finding more and more actors are like I'm digging this. this is so cool you know and it's like yeah but back then it was like I hate this <laughs> and yeah so now I'm using the LN1 just kind of stippling over and blending out that heavy duty shading I, I've done You know, I've always been a huge fan of, of, of you know, of Starfleet, Starfleet to the core. You know, um, you know that 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 appeals to me. That you know, seeking out new life and new civilizations. That so, uh, you know, I, I would, you know, uh, look if if I had my druthers, it would be the captain of a starship. It would be. Yeah, but you know, it wouldn't have but, uh, to be a human. But it, I mean, it, it wouldn't yeah. have to be human. Yeah. Uh, you know. Yeah. It, hmm. Maybe, a, maybe a Vulcan. I, I think that would be interesting to to play a Vulcan because it's it's commonly people commonly mistake Vulcans as, as having no emotion, but that's not the case. They're just emotions are 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 suppressed and they and they control them. And I think that's I think that's an interesting thing to play. You know. See, I really loved the way Tim Russ went about his his character and the way they developed his character. Tuvok, open your mouth a little bit. There we go. Just kind of get rid of that pink in there. That was, yeah. it's always a pain.
it was it's weird like I, just being on the cruise and stuff and talking about the show and people asking me about things i'm like see i being there mm -hmm. and you know i wasn't recording anything you right know? And, right right and i didn't have time to watch star trek i i was there i was on a space station i was on you know i was on the bridge of the enterprise <laughs> you know i was on planet hell you know it just you just didn't you didn't have time. I, you know what's weird though? There were people I worked with, and mm -hmm. I'm like, so your weekends are basically parked in front of a television set watching like sitcoms that you, you know, catching up. Yeah, like you you know recorded, and I'm like, eh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, back then, you know, I I would go see movies on the weekend, mm -hmm. you know, or I would I would go hiking Benedict Canyon or something like that, you know, I, you know. Yeah, I, I would catch things in rerun. Yeah. You know. I mean, there were some episodes I definitely wanted to see yeah. that I worked on. And and sadly, you know, I would have to wait. Mm -hmm. You know, um, like Blood Oath. That, you know, and All Good Things. And, you know, there was just, you know, some that were... What was John Coast like to work with? Oh, my God. I love that man. Oh. Oh, my God. It's such a shame he's gone. Yeah. Um... My granddad worked on Battlestar Galactica oh, okay. with him, and uh, um, you know, I, I, I've never—I don't think I've ever heard anything negative about anyone having an acting experience with that man, John John Calicos. Like, was a true actor. I mean, this man. Just yeah, he he had such an amazing career, and he you know he truly Shakespearean. Oh and, yeah, and a very accomplished Shakespearean actor, and and I just felt bad because you know at this point he's in massive costume and makeup, and you know he wasn't in great health. In fact, all three of the original Klingons weren't. Mm -hmm. And um, I felt bad, you know, and I would, I remember talking, you know, to each of the other actors and, and they were just like, I don't know why we have to be in all of this. We weren't in this in the original. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> and it was hot once again, you know. <sighs> yeah. It, it, taking consideration LA in this, you know, late August, you know, September, you know, and you're in... You know, these suits, you know, that have leather and fur and plastic and vinyl and, uh, you know. Yeah, they were in their 70s and 80s, right? Yeah. And, you know, it just, I, yeah, I, I remember on, I think it was a Sword of Kalos. It's the one I, I did uh, uh, Rick Pascone's makeup as uh, Terrell mm -hmm. Duras. And uh, what a great guy to work with. And, uh, you know, John was back for that, and I remember just hanging out with him and, you know, bringing him water and stuff like that. He, and and he, was, he was so sweet about it. He's like, no, you don't have to get me. I'm like, no, no, you should stay hydrated, you know. And, you know, it, yeah, he, he, him and I would just sit there, and I'd listen to him talk. One of the most interesting fellows you'd ever want to meet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so I'm flipping this alcohol-activated makeup from okay. Premier Products. This is a, a light yellow undertone kind of highlight I'm doing just to kind of make it look real and add, add another bit of dimension to it. Uh, this, um, this is a special palette that I had Premier Products uh, make for me. It has my name on it and it's only available through me. Oh gosh, um, infomercial here. But there's a gazillion different palettes out there. I came out with the feature and the sequel. I have to, I have to talk about these because these are really great. If you can open them, <laughs> that's the joke. Uh, anyway, this, these two palettes are all you need. You don't need to, you know. You know how to mix color you've got every color in the world available at your fingertips anyway so if you're traveling which i do um this is 
why the palettes were designed the way they were. But if you're doing cosplay, these alcohol colors are great, especially for hand or neck makeup, because it doesn't come off till you take it off. So, once again, if you're doing an Andorian makeup or, you know, anything that isn't a normal humanoid shade, You're making a good Romulan. Um, oh, awesome. You've got kind of a smirk. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's the thing I liked about Romulans. They, they're so smirky, you know? <laughs> like Nonclus on uh, first co uh, on uh, Undiscovered Country. Hmm. You know, when, when the president of the Federation or whatever you know, says, you know, what What about, what do the Romulans think? It's like, we, we don't quite I, know what to think. I don't know what to think. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to see more of that character. I liked him. Yeah, he was great. He he just, I, I, you just got the sense that he was just waiting to see what, how this played out. Yeah. And then the Romulans are going to move in. Yeah. <laughs> There was that great Q line when Q was, his powers were stripped, mm -hmm. and they took him to the brig, and and he's shouts out at, at Worf, Romulan. <laughs> <laughs> that look Michael Dorn does is so so good. Anyway, all right. My favorite line from Michael Dorn is uh, as Worf is good tea. Nice house. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was the one where the guy created. Yeah. That little patch of yeah. land. Yeah. And yeah. No. Okay. Now, bear with me. This is not one of those $3,500 Romulan wigs from the show. This is a How synthetic wig. <laughs> and um, it's, you know, it's wiggy. All um, right. I did, I did my best to trim it and cut it. It looks great. So, so anyway, this is, this is where we would stop. So, okay, at like 4 o'clock in the morning, 4.30, I'd got to this point and I'd be like, okay, you go off and see hair and wardrobe and then come back for your eyebrows. And in that time, I would clean my station, maybe go grab a bite to eat or eat something that I already had that's cold now um, and or take a nap. Hmm. Okay, so. What's what's the most uh, actors that you would have ha have to do? I mean, um, like, well, or, or they hire more people if you hire had, more people, okay, yeah. depending on what. I mean, that was the other thing. Like Mike Westmore would test people out, mm -hmm. and he would test them out on Bajorans, and like a Cardassian. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, let's use the Bajorans as guinea pigs now. Um, <laughs> He would test them out. You mean like he would? He would say he would bring people in, uh -huh. and they on big Bajoran days. Mm -hmm. um, they would be set up on a sound stage, and you know with makeup setups, and it's amazing. And if and if they uh, could handle the the Bajoran yeah. makeup, then. Just and then, then they would yeah. then, then, then they would graduate to like a pre-painted pullover mask that okay. they would have to and and then now I moved through those ranks really quick and um, use an adverb Tom or rather quickly <laughs> and, and so what happened is um, some of the people who'd been on the show for a while were just like who's this guy I'm like well I you know I worked prior to this show doing prosthetics you know. I've got my lace eyebrow. <sighs> Sorry. Speaking of spirit gum, this is Telesis Spirits. This is made from PPI. This is one of my 
This is my favorite um, glue for lace. And this is the regular Telesis Spirits. They make a Telesis Spirits gel, which is freaking phenomenal. I, I wish I had that earlier on in my career. They also make a matte Telesis, which is a silicone, mm -hmm. just like the regular silicone, but it's matte for Eyes nice, closed, please. Lace pieces. Yeah, yeah. The eyebrows makes the Romulan. That's what they say on Romulus. <laughs> the lobes make the Ferengi. If you get a chance, yes, maybe Scott could pull it up on his mobile device. All right, I I got asked to come and work on Star Trek. Star Trek continues. Okay. And I got to do Joanne Linville's daughter Amy Rydell as her mother's character. Oh, I've seen the pictures. as the Romulan yeah. commander. And what a freaking honor! Shout out to Lisa Hansel for having me on that. Um, oh my god. It was so wonderful. Like that, you know, being a Star Trek fan, that was a dream come true. I mean, it really was. And then, you know, I got to eat, I got to meet Amy's mother. <laughs> I can't even talk. Uh. And um, at this makeup convention called um, IMATS in LA, okay. she came by and, and sat while I did her daughter's makeup as her character from Star Trek. Anyway, oh, so. I found the national, the Romulan national anthem. Can you can you find that, Scott, on YouTube? The Romulan national, national anthem. Anthem. It is spectacular, and Amy hated me. She's like, "Stop it! <laughs> Stop playing that!" Because I I I did take it too far. <laughs> Um, all right, so it's, it's a Romulan, you know, um, we, we could do more tweaking around the eyes, I guess, you know, if, if we so wanted to, which I might be a little inclined to do. Um, and here we are. Here's our hey, so I just happen to have this, um, this uh, nice little uh, coat that's kind of Romulan-esque. Um, you know, it's imperial looking and, and you're like uh, I'm a senator. Yeah. It, and the Romulan the Senate. Yeah. <laughs> so uh but you know, being in the Star Trek world it would not have buttons. It would no magically, you know yeah, it would just, just magically just, magnets, yeah. it would just run so, your hand over it. Uh finished uh finished Romulan makeup. For now, now like I was saying, I'm going to recreate the the dead Romulan uh, okay. from generations. So uh we'll be right back. Ist zu hoffen, ist tot auf Sepertex. I, 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 I want to say, like, first off, I feel like I'm wearing a hat. That's what. <laughs> That's what this feels like. I feel like because I, I I keep wanting to bring my hand to it and move my hat around, but it's a that's it. So it, it feels very snug, uh, which I think it needs to be. Um, but I just took a really good look at myself in the mirror, and. It's kind of, whoop, there's a door. Oh. Um, it was, it's, it's strange because uh, when I saw Curtis Romulan in the mirror, I'm like, oh, I know who that guy is. <laughs> I know who that guy is. And as an actor, you're given the script and you're making your choices and you're looking at all that. But I got to be honest, when I saw myself in the mirror, I'm like, I know that character. So whatever was, was given, I, that, it, it just, it, it, it helps so much to, right. to, to, to look at this and see see who Curtis Romulan is right. and uh, you know I've had actors who have never wore prosthetics mm -hmm. and they're wearing something and this is a subtle prosthetic compared to some really big like Doug Jones thing right? oh yeah yeah where you're hidden like and you're on stilts and you're doing all sorts of other things and harnesses and things because mm -hmm. you know like 
you've got these narrow little hoof legs and things like that yeah. and, you know massive amount of weight here and there's no way you could actually do that so they've got like harnesses you know cables holding you up and your mm -hmm. suit actor jobs right so I'll, I, I would have an actor you know once in a while sit down and it's like I don't even know my face anymore and I don't know how I'm gonna act in this and that I'm like okay well you've got a new face um, and I'm like the best thing you could do is go to go to your trailer and sit down look in the mirror run your lines and get to know because a lot of actors also would be like this I, I I'm scared to move my face and I'm like it's it's on there it's yeah. now part of your face you know it's like you mm -hmm. know do this you know move 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 your forehead so you can you can get expressions and everything so the best thing to do is, yeah. is like be sympathetic to your actors and stuff because yeah. they, this a lot of times it is new to them and and you know it's it's getting to know now you're going to have new facial expressions. When you look mad, you're going to really look mad having a brow like that. Yeah, you know? yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, I, I mean... <laughs> no, so, I, I mean, I part of me wishes I had a scene to do. Because, like, I know this guy. I know who, you know, and that's a testament to, to, to you know, what you did. And, 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 how, and how great this is that, that, you know, an actor can look in a mirror and go, that's who it is. That's who, that's who, that's who, uh, you know... Curtis Romulan is, or whatever the name of my <laughs> Romulan character would would be, would be, because it's all supposed to help. It's all supposed to help the character. It, it, you know, it, it shouldn't hinder it. Now, there was a story Mike told me years ago. Mike Westmore, right? Um, some guy got casted to play a Romulan, uh -huh. and it was for TNG years ago, mm -hmm. right? And it's not like Star Trek hasn't been around for a minute at that yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. You know, so um, he was he was told, yeah, you know, there's going to be, you know, makeup. You're going to have some uh -huh. ears and whatever. And so this is a really light makeup. I mean, this mm -hmm. isn't that bad to wear. No. So the guy comes in for a costume fitting and, you know, the, I think probably a wig to make sure that, it, you know, uh -huh. they had a size that would fit him correctly. And 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 on the day he gets made up and um halfway through the day he just disappeared he you know went to his trailer and uh packed up and on the way to uh his car in the parking structure he started ripping everything <laughs> off <laughs> yeah <laughs> and so we're talking lace eyebrows <sighs> um so you know that's that's probably you know 100 bucks worth of eyebrows the forehead you know i don't know how much might charge for a forehead the ears you know that's a separate cost and then a $3,500 lace wig that he ripped <sighs> off and threw in a trash bin luckily they found all of it all the way to the parking structure and they realized this guy just darted and i'm like this is a wow it's just not very professional no um, no yeah. <laughs> so i assume they recast him oh uh, yeah so <laughs> wow poor guy i mean geez but seriously don't take a role if yeah you know okay don't do the crime if you can't do the anyway yeah. chin up All right, so I'm gonna have you keep your eyes closed. Okay. So I'm getting glue up in that nook there gotcha. of the brow. So this fits in nicely. All right. Now, if I'm not mistaken, mm -hmm. I actually chewed into the prosthetic on the original, on the film. <laughs> Once again, that, how many years ago was that now? <laughs> Generation? It was uh, 1958, it, it, right? It, it, 94. 94, yeah. I mean, I stuff. Yeah. It, <sighs> okay. Do you ever have to work with, like, uh, a special effects person on set to where, like, okay, like, like for example, this, where it, it's a situation where they need to do something and then this needs to be... And this needs to appear to where you have to work with uh, like somebody. a visual person, like a yeah, like yeah. a visual effects person. Um, yeah, on Buffy we had something you know like that a couple times, mm -hmm. um, like you know when vampires would get staked and things yeah. like that, and so yeah, I had to do that once on um, 
on uh, the S Secret Santa, the movie that I'm, I'm Amazon Prime, you can uh, rent it, um, where they had I got stabbed in the neck with a fork, um, and it was uh, it you know it was a practical effect, but but then the the makeup was a plastic fork sticking out of my you know neck, so I had to walk around for a day with a plastic fork. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, and yeah. the, you know, and the bloody stuff, you know, sticking out of the neck. But they had to run a tube from the floor up through my neck, and when they got stabbed, their blood would explode. And it was cold. It we, we shot up in Big Bear, so it was. Oh like, yeah. It was a, uh, and it was like at four in the morning. So here I am, all drenched, and we're like, all right, let's do it again. Yeah, so, I, I, I um, did this throat slashing in uh, Timonium. And, okay. Um, it was God. The, the the ground was frozen, so yeah, I know cold. And and um, Lance Baldwin was the actor. God bless him. What a sweetheart. Oh, take after take, and then we had to take him back to um, base camp and wash him off in a tent with a mix of hot water that was used to, to make tea <laughs> and and like regular water and. You know, then get him all cleaned up and change his wardrobe and get him. Oh, poor guy. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. So. One of the, my favorite things right now, I'm gluing foam latex to foam latex. There's just something about the magic of gluing a prosthetic to a prosthetic. <laughs> they they. Now, in, now, you had to do this makeup. If, I remember you saying uh, two days in a row because, yeah. <laughs> because they didn't get to the shot. Okay, so anyone who has seen Generations, um, and if you haven't, spoilers, sorry, but it's if you if you blink, you miss it. it it's literally such a, a quick shot of the dead Romulan, and and uh, you know uh, the actor I can't remember his name. Gil can't remember his last name. The sweetest, what a nice guy. Um, and very tolerant of all of this. He actually really enjoyed being in makeup and sitting around with one eye all day. Um, which, once again, as we were saying, you know, it's, sometimes you get actors who, you know, a Bajoran nose was too much for them. But um, don't go out for sci-fi roles, you know, uh, note to self, right? Anyway, yeah. so what, um, what happened is we, we got a call and I had a reasonably normal call. I think it was like 5.42 in the morning or something like that. Okay, so I go in and my actor's there and I've got the pieces and I get him in makeup, send him off to hair. He gets, you know, the damaged wig and then he gets wardrobed up and then I put a little blood on and then we're gonna do more blood on the set. It's not really bloody because, you know, a phased energy weapon is going to cauterize most of it. They're not going to... So anyway, um, he, uh, sat, you know, we sat around all day. And we had lunch, came back, did touch-ups, and that afternoon, late afternoon, we got word saying, uh, we're probably not going to get to this scene. And... We're like, oh, you're mm. kidding. And then it was like, we might get to the scene. And so this kind of went back and forth for a while. And then finally it was like, we're not going to get to the scene. Um, you know, clean them up, come back tomorrow. And <laughs> ended up coming back the next day, doing it all over again. Mm. <laughs> and, and yeah, it was. Did they shoot him pretty quick, or would you no, have to wait to the end of the day? No, we we were. He was in makeup for probably. I'd say it was about two hours, maybe. You're sitting around for about two hours, and then it was like, okay, you know, come to set, and we we shot it. They did a couple takes of it, you know, and and every you know, check the gate. Gate's clear. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. <laughs> it's wrap on Gil, and uh, anyway. Went back, took it off, and it was, yeah, it was. It was That's great. It was I mean, movie ma making insanity, you know. So, I mean, yeah, 
the actor got a, another day. Another day, and he yeah. got two makeup. But I mean, as an actor, I'm thinking, like, I got two days out of that? And yeah. You got two makeups? And, and, you know, because of it being a makeup where, you you know, you, you're you also missing, vi you know, you, you have no vision now mm -hmm. uh, in one eye. Um, I think he, he ended up getting, like, a special bump. Oh, I love it. Yeah, yeah. So, I hope he did. It's been forever ago since that happened. So, um... All right, so I'm going to go in with some of my prosthetic paint here to Did you go on location with uh, with uh, Generations, or were you were just all this no, stuff? No, it was shot? all on soundstage, yeah. Gotcha. I mean... Yeah, I... On, um... On DS9, mm -hmm. uh, I ended up on some of the locations and stuff, like, out in the desert. Mm -hmm. and, oh, God. Huh. Nobody wants to do that. Well, no, no. <laughs> yeah, the, it's always a desert planet. <laughs> Why does... Because um, we live in Southern California. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> did, you, did you ever work on uh, Brent Spiner with, uh, with, with David? Uh, here's an interesting yeah. story. Mm -hmm. um, there was this one episode where Mike needed a hand and he grabbed me and I was like yay I get to you know do this and I, I got to watch Brent on set and uh, it was great you know actually getting to meet him and talk with him you know um, because I, I followed his career pre Star Trek and I think he liked that I was talking about night court <laughs> uh, well actually like like Sunday in the park uh, or Sunday in the after uh, Sunday in the park with George the okay. musical Oh, gotcha. And I was like, <sighs> you know, going on about, oh, God, are we ever going to hear Data sing? And he's like, probably not, you know. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, this is way before Nemesis. <laughs> so, but, yeah, I, uh, I, you know, I loved him on, you know, all the different things. He was a preacher on a, a Tales from the Dark Side episode. Really? And... <laughs> it's funny because like fistful of datas mm -hmm. like his kind of like hillbilly voice that's the same hmm. the same voice he did so <laughs> nice yeah okay so i did a bit of charring it's okay. all i'm just all trying to remember you know because it's been I mean, it's it's almost a shame that this, like at the end of the, I mean, probably not for you because you want to, you know, go home after a long day of being on set, but like, this is really a work of art. Like I was looking at it, like I said, I was looking at it in the mirror and then looking at the pictures that Scott was taking. Like that's a, it's almost, it's like, it's like doing a puzzle. It's like, I don't want to take the puzzle apart. Right. You know, it's like, oh. You know, some of the, oh God, some of the makeups um, I've done mm -hmm. on different shows, not just Trek, but, right. you know, other shows where it's a test makeup day. And you've got all day kind of like to come up with something and, you know, like, and then, you know, they, they, they shoot it for, to see how it's going to read and things like that. And, you know, you might have to go back and do more tweaking, but it's like an all day affair. And then right. by the end of the day, you've got this kick-ass makeup. And I was on one particular film where... We, we did this with several makeups, and it would be testing for a couple of days with the same makeup. Mm -hmm. And um, and then they, they, they were like, no, we're not going to use it. So it never even made it to the film. Wow. Yeah.
Yeah, but it's yeah, it's 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 a shame that that your art has to come off at the end of the workday. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I you know it just. I mean, you can take pictures of it, obviously, and it's and it's more immortalized, you know, on it's forever on the screen. On, 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 on yeah. the screen, but it's it, you know, and you only see it from certain vantage points in the screen too. Mm. So okay, there's a bit of bone here. All right, sure. Oh, cool. But just just so that so the viewers know, I mean, when I looked at this up close in the mirror, I mean, there was. It looked like my face. I mean, there was texture. There was there was nuance. There was bone structure. There was all of that. Mm -hmm. You know. So it's it's. I mean, it, it's it's again. I don't mean to keep tooting your horn, but it's truly a work of art. Toot away. <laughs> yes. You know. Toot it's on. it's um, just. Uh, I mean, uh, I mean, just amazing. Thank so. you. Yeah. It it's it's odd because there's certain. Certain makeups, I look back too. You know, this is pre cell phone and, mm -hmm. and things like that. So, you know, a lot of stuff we didn't get pictures of. Um, oh, and I was yeah. also really scared to death of losing my job. Uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and and Star Trek has always been one of those things where it's like, yeah, you don't want to you don't want to overstep boundaries and take pictures and things like that. And so I was always good about that. Mm -hmm. It, uh, some people weren't, but anyway. Right, yeah, no, I can imagine those people. Any, <laughs> um, yeah. Anyway, so what happened is, um, a lot of it's gone. You know, it's it's you know kind of yep. memories. You know, faded. Hmm. No, I believe it. I believe it. Yeah. No. It. Yeah. And it's it's weird because. Look, as as an actor too, you're just showing up every day, going, "Please don't fire me." A right. lot of times, you know, and and you don't want to get fired for something stupid. Like, I took a picture. You're like, "Well, just just easy on the social media for a day to well, keep yeah. your job." Well, you back know? then there was no social so, media. Yeah, you know, back, back then, like, yeah, yeah. You know. So, yes, so. there was a world before Facebook <laughs> and Instagram <laughs> and TikTok and things. So, um, I'm going to. Get this blood and okay. dress it a bit now. All right. This blood is older than like I have I have a wow, I, love I it. have an apprentice and and this blood is like older than her. <laughs> <laughs> That's really sad. <laughs> yeah, on that Secret Santa movie, I had to have mouth blood. Right. I had to, yeah, which again I loved it. I was like, no, let's you know load me up. I gotta spit up blood. Let's go. In fact, I had to do it on the on the test for Secret Santa, Scott. Mm. Remember when we shot that uh, on the day after uh, Thanksgiving? Blood spurred in my face. You had this exploding thing that it would go. Oh Pah. yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 When we did the, when we did the the fifth passenger. The um, fifth passenger test. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the um. Which one call it? The, um, okay, so yeah, we right. have. Can I open my eye or no? Yeah, yeah okay, you can okay. open your eye. Yeah. So this is what Gil had to walk around with for two days. <laughs> wow. Essentially. So, um, God, this is like kind of weird bringing back memories. Uh, <laughs> eerie, like yeah, weird bringing back memories now. Ooh. <laughs> I guess it's a good day to die. Oh, 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 God. I'm the order of the Bartlett, son of Kayless. Your family has no honor, but I couldn't care less. I was born to kill Federation swine, and I celebrate with a barrel of blood wine. Oh, God. <laughs> All right, so, um, finish makeup. And, um, you know, of course, leave comments and stuff like that, questions. Um, yeah. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Sick pay. <laughs> when to beam up. <laughs> I'm gonna leave your ass behind. <laughs> some more to pay. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, anyway, uh, Dead Romulan Generations. So. Cool. Uh, uh, closing thoughts. 
Well, this has been fun for me. <laughs> I, I, and I'm sure, I hope, I, I'm assuming it. I've had a blast. Okay. No, this is great, Tom. Thank yeah, right you. Thank you eye. so much. Oh, oh, yeah, gosh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it, it, it's, it's, it, for me, it was kind of like finding the mold for the eyepiece after all these years. I just purged a bunch of stuff. And it, I thought, oh, God, did I get rid of it? And, and I found it. I was like, there, it, you know, uh, this would be fun. <laughs> it would really be fun to do this again. So no, this is great. And again, it, 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 being an actor, I mean, this is part of the part of the process. So yeah. it's it's cool. It's cool to to, to do this. I mean, yeah. it's it's fun, and it's that that's why that's why we do it. So it's uh, well. But thank no. you very much. Thank you very <laughs> thank much. You no, very I'm much. excited. Thank you very. Thank much. you for attending uh, uh, Virtual Trekcon Three. Yes. All right. Cool. Live long and prosper and no, no uh, phaser or blast to the eye. Never believe in the no-win scenario. <laughs>